kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you? More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the um, And your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. You know, I'm a little more strict with what I'm I'm looking at. Uh, Etc. But when you have to, you have to. You can't keep people in homes they can't afford, right? And so, at some point, you may have to take possession of the asset. Prepayment risk with any mortgage people prepay, you don't get the interest, right? That you anticipate over the life of the loan. Servicing risk. We always recommend working with a servicer, similar to a property manager, to take your payments. There are laws around the way you communicate with buyers, so you don't want to put yourself in a position to do something illegal with communicating with buyer. Uh, and then regulatory risk. So COVID was a huge exception, nothing we've ever seen. But obviously you could not foreclose, right, for those two years within COVID. And so a lot of people who were the note game just back in. It doesn't mean you don't get there eventually, but it just took a little bit longer to be able to go through those processes. So I think I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna skip through this slide. Yeah, I'll be at the tables and, and dive in a little bit more, but what is the no buying process like? So what are you actually doing if you buy a no? So the first step is you actually have to actually have to identify inventory, right? We do help you find ways to identify inventory, but if you're in part of our note community, then uh, we actually give you inventory month because we're buying notes at scale for the fund. And so we also have a retail community. If you just want one or two in your portfolio, you want to be more hands-on in managing your notes, then you can do that, and so we provide inventory monthly. But then the next step is initial due diligence, which we call desktop due diligence. So many of you are doing this already if you're in the real estate game, right? You're getting on Zillow, we're looking up the value of the home, we're on Google Maps, we're seeing what's going on in the area, how close are we to a Walmart, we're really understanding what the value is of that property and our ability to get back out of that asset, right, if we need to at some point. We're also starting to do our research on liens. Are there any tax liens? How much are they behind on taxes? We're starting to put together an initial budget. If at that point we like, kind of in that soft due diligence, we like what we're looking at, we think we want to make an offer, we go into deep dive due diligence, right? And at this point, we're pulling the title report. I heard somebody else talking about title earlier, but we're pulling that title report, we're going to go through that. We're actually going to call a realtor in that area, no matter where it is in the country, we're going to get them to drive by the house and take pictures. Because you don't want to buy a note when you think there's a house on it and it burned down two years ago, and you're actually buying a piece of land with no house, right? You've got to be thorough on the due diligence. This is really a due diligence game. If that looks good, we actually go to offer and purchase. One thing I'm going to show at least one example, so I'm going to skip around a little bit so I can show you an example of a note deal. But on that offer and purchase, depending on the note, whether it's full performing, kind of semi-performing or non-performing, you can actually get huge discounts on buying into these notes. And you're buying them on the unpaid balance of the note, not the as-is value of the property, which is huge. I'll show you that in the example. But you're in a position where you want to make an offer, you go to deal desk, and then once you go to that offer, then we go through the close, you're working with your attorney, we're getting everything recorded, you're getting those original documents, which we recommend putting in a fireproof safe. You've got to have the originals, right? It's a document game. And then you're getting your servicer set up and you're off to the races with your note. And so that's why I say this really is a front-end due diligence paperwork game, which for me, I enjoy a lot more than uh, the, the physical asset grind of uh, the fix and flip game. Uh, next slide, please. So ways to work with us. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because if you're really interested, come see us. Truly passive investments, the way to go is, for, is through the fund. Right? Um, this is for credit investors only because it is through the SEC. The minimum buy-in here is 100 k Return is 8% plus, depending on how much you invest. It goes all the way from 8% to 20% return. But this is truly passive. You put your money in, you don't have to do anything. You send your report quarterly, and you get distributions quarterly. Very straightforward. The other three ways that you can work with us are all around no education. Because for us, I think Larry hit on this, we're not gonna set you up to fail, right? There are a lot of things I've talked about in here. You've gotta be educated on the game and the paperwork to be successful here. And so you cannot get access to inventory with us until you do some education. We're just, we're not gonna set you up to fail. And so all of these programs are some version of us teaching you our proprietary due diligence process. We give you access to inventory. 
you're part of our community. We do different types of education every month. One of my favorites is scrape the tape. So if you're not feeling comfortable with due diligence, every Tuesday we all get on a live call. We go through the mortgage tapes together. We do diligence live on the call. You also get access to our exclusive events. And then um, again, the big one is access to inventory because once you're ready to go, everybody knows finding the deal is hard. And so we're gonna bring inventory to you for you to go through. All right, this is a performing asset that was in Little Rock, Arkansas, okay? And the ARV on this was 90,000, the unpaid balance, 58,000. And so the unpaid balance is effectively talking about how much money is left on the mortgage loan. And that's what we buy on. We don't buy on the assets value or ARV, we buy on the unpaid balance. And so in this particular note, every month you bought the note, you're bringing in $600, which is a combination of both your principal and interest every month. You can see what the insurance is, and you'd like to see a down payment from the buyers because make sure they got skin in the game, right? If you want performing notes, they're invested to spin up with the mortgage payments on this property. We were able to purchase it at 90% of the unpaid balance, so we came into this note for only 53000 This was a passive investment strategy. It was a perfect pay, no late fees, 11 years left. Got a discounted. You can literally at this point send it to your servicer, get a check every month for $600, and keep going, right? This was 11% return on funds, originated in 2020 and towards the 2023, right? So if you're looking for passive performing notes, this type of note is what you're looking for. But let's take a quick look at a non-performing note, which is where I honestly get excited sometimes. Can you, uh, next slide, please? Because you'll see the power of non-performing notes if you're comfortable with some of the risks. So with the non-performing note, this was a property in Texas. It was a mortgage, so the as is value of this property was 110 k The after repair value, we had done the work to take the market, was 160 k The reason why the numbers are a little bit different here is because when you buy into a non-performing note, you have to actually keep up that asset, right, while you're going through the process to take possession. So you have to pay the property taxes, you have to keep the insurance going, you're probably going to have an attorney, but the unpaid balance on this note was only $38,000. And we were all in with a discount on this note, plus the insurance, plus the attorney fees for roughly $40,000, right? What was the strategy? Foreclosure and wholesale it, it's not performing. They were over five years delinquent. Delin delin the property was completely vacant at that time. And so we began the foreclosure process. We had AK and HOA liens that had to be released, but acquired in 2019, sold in 2020 for 114K. We were all in for $40,000. So you can see the power, right, of these assets um, if you're willing to play the game. I'm not being rushed off yet. I got one more example. Just walk you one more case study, and then I'm going to pass to my next speaker. So this one, I didn't actually have a picture of the house. This is my apartment deal. That's what we're going to show you. This I'm going to show you an example of different types of paperwork. And so this was, is what's called a lease service option, where people might lease the property. You don't have kind of paperwork, so it's not all just mortgages. But a lease service option, they're actually paying a lease property. And then a certain period of time, let's say five years, they get an option to buy the house. And so on this particular property, uh, the tenant had paid the lease in two years, they were behind, and the option to buy the property had expired. Right? We had pulled this for 13 months. Total expenses equal $63,000. We made over uh, $111,000 on this. I say we each and my partner. We combined it together. But what happened is once that lease service option expires, right, they had paid the lease in two years, the tenants actually wanted to get back up on the property and get current, but they ended up having to put a new mortgage and a new note on the property. So we, which is sometimes better for them anyway, it's better paperwork, we put their name on the deed. And so again, we do a lot to take care of our tenants. When they came back to that property, the new note was at the new price, not the lease price from five years ago when they bought it. And so again, coming into this $63,000 and making a profit of 111, uh, 111,000, that's 171% profit. So hopefully, I'm probably a little over, but you can see why I get really excited about bringing this asset class to you. Um, would love to talk a little bit more. Next slide has got my info on it. Go one more if you want to get in touch. Um, so if you're interested in any information about the fund, email me, work at ethioscapitalgroup.com. And then also if you're interested in the uh, mortgage notes kind of education, you just want to build your own portfolio, you can go to learnaboutnotes.com. We are replatforming our online course that's going to launch again on June 10th, but there's a sign up there if you want to drop your name in and be uh, notified. And if you're interested in any of the hands-on training, etc., you can send me an email and we will set up time to talk. I hope that was helpful. Did you learn something? Show a hand. Show a hand. <laughs>
There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room